Welcome back everyone. Recently I made a video about suckless.org's Scent, which is a presentation tool to take a simple markdown document and do presentations. And it's very minimal, super lacking in features, um, but in that vein I wanted to talk about a variety of other options for making presentations beyond just the ubiquitous PowerPoint. So if, just for a quick refresher, Scent, if you just use the command Scent and give it a file, uh, it could be a markdown file, it could just be you know file name, but you give it a file using markdown syntax, you can use arrow keys, clicks, or vim keys to go through the presentation, it displays text, images, transparent background images, excuse me, emojis, uh, you can do escape so you can actually get special characters in there, and it has uh, Unicode support, etc. That's Scent. Scent was really easy, and I'll put a link to the video in the card up in the channel. But what are some other good options we have of using open source software to create presentations? So some simple examples, I, I like R. I really like R. R can do a lot of great things. For instance, in R Studio, there is something called an R Prez presentation, an R presentation. If you start a brand new presentation, you can go to our studio, brand new file, and go to our presentation right here, and it will create a sample file like this. This will actually be kind of like Markdown syntax, but as a presentation that is displayed here in our studio. Now you can see here in my presentation viewer that um, this is a presentation file actually showing itself. So basically RStudio is where you write your code, it's where you compile your documents, deal with packages, do development, do testing, and apparently give PowerPoint presentations without being PowerPoint. It's an RPres presentation. So with this, you start a brand new file. You could put you know, your plot output, your just markdown syntax, just plain text. It could be whatever you want it to be. We even have some YAML stuff here. Now, if I just go through this, you can see there's a little button here, or I could just click, I can't, actually I can't click there, but if I click the button, it'll actually let me go through the slides. If I use my arrow key, it'll let me go through the slides as well. So I've actually made an R presentation on the usage of Vim before that I gave to a code group I'm a part of. It's a very useful tool. It's a very simple syntax. It's all plain text. And then it actually will display this presentation in RStudio. So in this case, your IDE, if you do a lot of R coding, can also give presentations. But this isn't also, this isn't the only format that you can actually use with R in RStudio. With R Markdown, if you created an R Markdown file and you go to what type of R Markdown file, we want presentation, you have a variety of options. Yes, you can export R Markdown to PowerPoint. All of the Microsoft applications that now, all the new versions that end with an X in their file name, docx, pptx for PowerPoint, xlsx for Excel documents, if they end with X, it basically means that those files are no longer in a proprietary binary format. They are actually basically all zip files holding a variety of XML documents, which means that it's no longer closed sourced file types in a way. There are ways of converting things to and from Microsoft file formats now, which is really useful for a lot of the open source community dealing with uh, Microsoft software and files and just in data interchange between them. But in short, you can actually convert through Pandoc, because that's what R uses for a lot of this stuff is Pandoc, to a PowerPoint presentation. I'm not going to go over PowerPoint because I don't want to, I don't have it on my computer, I don't want to display it, and PowerPoint is ubiquitous. But we have some other options here. We have iOS slides, we have Slidey, we have Beamer with LaTeX, and I'm gonna do a separate example, but we have Beamer. And for iOS slides, um, you can use, you can print these into PDF within Chrome. You can do the same for Slidey. These are basically browser HTML slideshows, and they're actually pretty clean looking. And I'm gonna go show you examples of each of those and then a Beamer example. So iOS slides using just a basic, template document. This is just what happens when you create an R Markdown file with this presentation format. You can knit it and it will knit the document and it will open up a browser preview. This is basically like if you open this in your web browser. I can use arrow keys, I can use clicks, but it will actually let me navigate uh, the presentation. I can't use clicks actually, just arrow keys. But it will actually let you navigate this presentation. 
And look how clean this looks. It's got a nice fade. It'll actually do titles and hyperlinks because it's an HTML document. So basically, because it's an HTML document, using JavaScript libraries, it means that you can, if you wanted to, modify this yourself and input custom JavaScript and kind of go nuts with your presentations. Basically, all the stuff that R can do when it exports to an HTML format means that you can use the entire world of web development at your fingertips in these presentations and documents. So that's an iOS slide. It's pretty clean looking. Slidey is pretty similar. It opens up in a web browser. I'm going to knit that. Now this one will let me use my uh, mouse clicks and arrow keys and space bars. And it's not as like contained in a single, like, you know how we had that, that um, silhouette view? This one is kind of just like takes up the whole view and just displays slides of content. In this case, oh, it's got some nice color. Same thing, got hyperlinks because it's HTML. Great, so those are like two HTML outputs from RStudio using just an R Markdown document. And that's really cool. Now you can also output to PowerPoint. Great. So if you are working on a Windows machine, you just want to have an easy PowerPoint produced with R Markdown because you do everything in R and R Markdown. Great. But what about Beamer? So Beamer is a lot of text. It's using LaTeX to create a slideshow. And if you use default themes like Frankfurt here, which is kind of you know a joke at this point, so many people just use the default Frankfurt theme or just use a default theme that people just get, you know burnt out on presentations because they're using the exact same uh, style and they don't get too custom with it. And to be honest, LaTeX is highly extensible and customizable, but it's also very verbose and probably hard to edit stylistically than something like uh, an HTML output that you could do some CSS on, which is possible. Um, so if I took this document and I actually compile it to its actual intended format, which is a PDF, if I open the PDF in my PDF viewer, um, like this, it will actually, um, you, you can actually click on these links and move through the slides like this. And that's great. It's kind of clunky on my system. I think other PDF viewers, like if you're using Shutter, Adobe Acrobat, it might work better. Um, but what I did is I just also opened it in my browser. I just opened the locally hosted file in my browser. And then you can see like I hover over these and I have links. I can go to different sections. I can go back a slide. I can go back, a, I can go forward a section. Um, you have all these different options with Beamer. And if I go through these slides, you can also do different columns. And I have a picture in here, it's a figure. You know, it's a really cool, cool way of getting a text-based, plain text, um, minimalist format for presentations. So all of these formats, every single one I just showed you today, all use plain text as the data file that governs the presentation. Now, some of my favorites are, well, sent is so minimalist that you just give it a markdown file and boom, you're off to the races and you don't even need a lot of like specialist syntax. Our presentations are pretty clean looking, I like them. And iOS slides, I actually like the, the silhouette feature. I'm not too big on slidey, but iOS slides, I really like how it looks, but then with HTML and CSS, you know, because it's an HTML document, you can easily change whatever you don't, you, you want to about it. Like, um, let's see, I'm gonna change, you can see each of these headings are all H2s um, because they have two of the hash symbols. Let's do something like, um, let's make this a CSS code chunk and say H2 color is red. Let's see what this will give us. So now, because I just added that simple line of CSS making the, uh, the header, the second level header, a red color, you can easily see, with just with some custom styling, we can change out you know, the different things we want with these presentations. So just because the nature of the extensibility of this one using the web stack, this would also be a very good contender for your presentations. Beamer, it's LaTeX. If you write a lot of LaTeX and you want something to be as granular as possible, completely plain text, all in one single language, you know, there you go, there's LaTeX. And you can do some really cool stuff with it. You can set up some snippet files so that the verbose nature of LaTeX is not as painful. Um, but honestly, 
kind of feeling the the scent and then the iOS slides and our prez. They're simpler, they just get you, you know, off the ground and running. And if I was gonna choose between our prez and iOS slides, I'd probably choose iOS slides because you got the web stack and you can easily customize things with CSS. And when you start tossing in CSS and JavaScript into the mix, you got some really powerful combinations you can do with your presentations, especially since it's all hosted in a browser. So that's it for presentations. I know there's probably a million other types of formats of presentations. Let me know some more obscure ones if you got them that all use plain text files to run them. But those are some examples of what you can do with open source software and plain text files to feed presentations. So before I go, quick shout out to my patron, Devin. He's the first patron on my Patreon account. And thanks for supporting the channel and thanks for watching today. Bye.